Okay, welcome. Just gonna give people a moment to grab swords. For this workshop, you will need a sword-like object, a mask, and gloves if you want them. It's up to you. Um, the good news is the schedule, even though it's running late, we still have an hour and a half to do the workshop, so we'll get the full workshop in. Um, so I'm Mike Prendergast. I lead instructor and founder of the Historical Combat Academy in Dublin. Welcome. <laughs> um, starting point, how many people have heard of Pietro Monte? Okay, few people. He's a little obscure. Monte is gather in a little so I don't have to shout over the tournament. Monty's an interesting gentleman. He's not that well known in HEMA. It's kind of hipster HEMA. But he's amazingly famous in his day. Um, Leonardo da Vinci writes about consulting him on the flight of darts or javelins. Uh, Castiglione, who writes the Book of the Courtier, calls him the supreme and perfect master of all forms of trained skill and agility. Um, a later Italian biographer calls him the, one of the premier infantrymen from Italy. So he is a knight. He's the son of a Marcus from Tuscany. He's born in 1457. He has a military career. From age 21, he commands 200 troops serving the Florentines in a, in a war. He serves various nations. He spent some time in the 1480s in Spain. He, in fact, his famous book, The Collectanea, he first wrote in Spanish, and then he translated to Latin. We think this because he wasn't a Latin scholar. Um, so he was possibly at the Siege of Granada because he was in Spain in 1492. And then in 1492, ciao. <laughs> in 1492, he moves to Milan. He's most known for being in Milan, where he writes his book, The Collectanea. And he, is the trainer for the commander of the Duke of Milan's cavalry. So he's a famous warrior, he's a captain, he's a general. He dies in battle at the Battle of Agnadello in 1509. But what we have in his book, The Collectanea, is the essence of maybe 15 or more years of professional military experience as a commander in the Italian wars, a time of professionalism in fighting. So. I first became interested in Monte about 2001, when there was a book called Renaissance Martial Arts, where he was mentioned. I waited a long time for someone to translate him, and I finally got off my backside about, um, I think it was 2013. Um, the book is written in Latin, and uh, I didn't know Latin, which was an obstacle. <laughs> But I, I managed to partner up with Ingrid Sperber, who's a, who has a PhD in Latin, and she's a professional Latinist. So we did a collaboration. I was the subject matter expert. She was the Latinist. So we, we hammered out a translation, which is freely available on the internet. I'm working on a version that I've refined more for a print book. But Monty himself teaches a lot of things. He has 18 different weapon combinations in his system. He's a master of horse, horseback riding. At jousting, his book con contains natural philosophy, personality profiling, choosing troops for the right job. But the essence of his fighting is based on three elements, and he teaches the many from the few. The foundation of fighting is wrestling, and our workshop today will begin with wrestling footwork. Then he teaches the long weapons. The long weapons example is the poleaxe. The poleaxe is as high as you can reach, or a little bit higher. So partisans, spatums, glaives, ronkas, spears of five different lengths fit into the long weapon category. Today I'm dealing with short weapons, of course. So this is a short weapon, which comes to the nose or eyes of its bearer. So this and everything down follows the sword. So single-handed sword, sword and buckler, sword and scutum, sword and targa, sword and rotella all follow the sword. What I find particularly interesting about Monte is he begins with the fundamentals of the sword. A lot of systems, you read a book and you go, okay, this is the first thing we learn in the book, but what did Fiori tell his students before we got to this bit? Monte has something called the levata of the sword. Levata is a word to lift up, like levitate, raise. And these are the first blows which we teach or which we learn. So today's workshop, you'll be learning the same techniques that the 
men-at-arms in the court of the Sforzas would be learning in the Ducal Palace in Milan in 1492, 1494, when this book was written. These are the first blows which you will learn. Before that, I'm going to go a little bit into footwork and a little bit into just Monty's philosophy of using and moving the sword, which is a bit different from some of the other systems. What we're teaching today is unarmored fighting one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, armored fighting is different, and a lot of it's about we have an opponent in front of us one-on-one, -on -one, so we're not going and dominating space. So it's unusual compared to a lot of great sword stuff, but I think you'll find a lot about flow and movement that translates very much. Okay, so at the end of Monty's career, he was co-commanding co the Venetian rearguard at Agnadello in 1509 when the entire French army showed up they fought them, assaulted them across drainage ditches and canals for about a long afternoon. Heavy cavalry came in. Finally, Monty died. But a biographer says that how Monty and his men died was very beautiful. He was fighting with his great sword covered in blood, swinging to left and right as a great storm flails down the trees and the bushes. So my aim for you today is at the end of this workshop, you will fight like a great storm and you will flail down and defeat and crush your opponents. Sound good? Yep. Okay, I'm done. now the boring bit. So it's down, footwork. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Irish. I, I don't speak German. And because I'm Irish, I sometimes mumble and I talk too fast. So if I need to slow down or if it's not clear, let me know, okay? Right, footwork. Monty gives us three principles for footwork. The first is you need to be above yourself. So your weight is above your feet. In the Historical Combat Academy, we say, get over yourself. So we're upright. Secondly, we take small steps, okay? And we take light steps. How do you know if the steps are light? So a little on the balls of your feet. This is wrestling footwork. It's not like some wrestling footwork, which is down here. It's very upright. Our energy is in our chest. We move lightly. We take big steps when we attack or when we avoid an attack. So small, 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 big. So to demonstrate that, we do an exercise I like to call aggressive dancing. So Sebastian, would you help me out? So we take a standard wrestling grip called evenly divide, divide arms. So it's one hand over and you put your hand in the same position. So these are very common wrestling grips. Some wrestling setups you start this way and then you wrestle. We're not wrestling today, we're moving. So what's happening is Sebastian's gonna move back and forth and I'm gonna keep pace with him. And uh, you shout halt after a little while. Yes, halt, okay, go. Now, are we above ourselves? Are we in balance? If we go here or here, two feet too close, two feet too far, we're losing contact with our, with our balance and our control. So that's basically the idea. Thank you, Sebastian. So we're gonna do aggressive dancing. To fit this, we're gonna just go back and forth in this direction so we don't bump into each other. Find a partner, height doesn't matter, pair up, we want rows. Think of it as a line dance, yeehaw! So this footwork comes from wrestling because wrestling is the best way to learn speed and agility and in, under pressure. Also, people train in wrestling before they learn arms and it's safer to learn wrestling. And Monty teaches, unlike Fury, Monty teaches wrestling as kind of a sportive game. And he kind of, de he um, disparages the Breton wrestling, which is like broken revolving and there's lots to say about different countries wrestling. So now we can get to the sword. So, I will, this is the bit, so you, um, I'm just going to get a sword and demonstrate something. You don't need a sword just this moment, but, but soon, but soon. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we've learned footwork. Now there are three principles I would take from Monty's writing on the sword. Uh, I'll start with Monty's home position. Monty has two guards that he talks about, two guard positions. This is prima, or first guard. Those who take this guard have their hands high on the right. Obviously, if you're lefty, it's high on the left. Um, it's high and it's on the right side. It's not central, 
to the right, because we're going to cut diagonally. Uh, by the way, all the other guards are this. Okay, it's on the left shoulder. It's not, it's not high on the left shoulder. Haven't figured out why. It's on the left shoulder. Okay, but we're going to work from prima today. So from prima, we're going to throw cuts. Three principles. First is, well, I'm just going to say this anyway. Sword goes first. Monty doesn't emphasize that. I just think it's good fencing principles. So you don't step into an attack. You, you launch the sword. The arm is straight. Okay, so we don't bend and throw. We throw and we extend the arm. Okay, it's not locked, but it's loosely extended. Second is as we throw the sword, we extend our body. Just like a lunge. No one calls it a lunge. Apparently lunge is discovered later. I don't know, but looks like a lunge to me. And the third, especially when you consider the weight of the weapon, the sword goes and is to be conducted in a circle. So, We don't want to go and Tinkerbell. We want to cut and bring the sword back. Sword leads, extended, back. So that's our first exercise. We're going to throw what Monty calls pendentes with an extension. We're going to recover to prima. Find space, get a sword. I throw the sword. When I cut the target, I check my watch. It's time for the sword to come back. Cut, check your watch. If you're cutting a reversal, cut, look at your cuff lengths, come back. So reverso, cuff lengths, mandrito, watch. Okay, so do a few, I'll walk around, keep an eye, just do a few cuts, sword first. Return to prima, that's it. A couple of observations. When you're attacking from prima, it's more efficient to have the sword high. If you're here, this feels a bit more Conan, which is obviously cool, but it's slower because you have to raise the sword to start. Sword needs to be ready to go down. So you have the sword high, you go down. It's more direct. And also, resist the temptation to step in because that's when your opponent will take the tempo to hit you. Sword goes first. And back. Okay? Sword high, sword first. Okay, so this is how we throw cuts. Now, we're going to find that Monty rarely throws downwards cuts. In the levata of the sword, there's kind of four major areas I, I take from the source. He throws about eight different cuts. In one of the sequences, there's one downwards cut. Monty likes rising cuts. So now we're going to get to the first blow of the levata of the sword. So I'll demo this in space first, so we can just try the movement, and then we'll do it in pairs to talk about why might we be doing this, and also what insight does it give us into the tactics of how Monty wants us to fight. Okay, so to start with, I'll just do it in different directions. Prima. We're throwing a montante. This cut is called a montante in, in Monte, a rising cut. So it comes around, reverse a montante. Usually when Monte does this, the first blow is short, so we keep our hands, arms close. Second blow is long. So short blow, long blow. Short blow, long blow. To throw the first cut, you have to have a loose grip. If you hold this like a hammer, you'll end up looking like this. You have to let the sword be loose. Steer the sword with the pommel. Oh, and keep your hands in front. Monty's fighting an opponent in front of him. He's not fighting somebody over here and here. So. Your, so your hands move around in front of you. Right? So let's do some of that. We're going to start in prima. Throw a montante. Throw a reverse a montante. Maybe throw a couple forwards. 
couple back, but only step back into the space you came out of. Okay? Get space. Let's throw the first blow of the levata. Because time is moving. Gather in. <coughs> Okay, so it's, it's nice to do this after lunch. It gets the blood flowing. Um, also, it's, you guys are used to big swords, so this is going faster than usual, so excellent. What I will say is there's a couple of things that will help make this efficient. Uh, one is Monty wants her arms in front of us, so not low but out in front of us. So when we throw the first blow, we're bringing our pommel up to get reach. We throw the second blow, pommel up. So see this position here? So you have to relax your grip so you can do it out. Okay. If the pommel's up, arms extend in front of our shoulder, we have better measure. Okay. If it goes down, we give an opening. If a sword is here, sword is protecting us as we cut. What the strength of the sword between your head and your opponent's sword, right? Cool, so pommel up. Always sword first, and this is out of armor. So unlike um, the previous workshop, where it was, you know, we don't like to cross our arms, we're fine with crossing our arms here because we're not armored, okay? In this context. So let's see, why would we do this thing? And remember I talked about a short blow followed by a long blow. Well, let's look at how Monty parries. How does Monty protect himself from an attack? Okay, would you help me out? Great. So I'll do this without a mask so you can hear me. We'll practice this with masks later. So please don't kill me at the beginning of the workshop. But if you do, make sure you get my good side. <laughs> so I'm in Prima. He's in prima, actually arm high, just, uh, just test the measure. I want you to cut me with a, with a passing step and just check you can reach me. Okay, yeah, that's really good. My arm's in the way of my head, I lose my arm. So I want to parry this. Okay. I have, okay, it's more dangerous now. I'm stepping back, I'm going for the middle of the sword, I'm controlling that. So now I have leverage, I could counter attack. So Monty turns the side that's under attack out of the way. He doesn't step in, he doesn't stay there. So attack me again. Yep. See, I'm not there. I don't rely on the movement, but the movement is part of my safety, part of my defense. Again. That's it. When we have masks, the person who defends will extend. Okay, that's the drill. First blow will be I'll just stand here, you'll test a ranging shot. Good. Then we'll repeat this, maybe 10 times, okay? If you're attacking, you know, don't just go with the parry, make your opponent parry you, but you know, just give, give feedback. Don't, don't brace against it, but make sure the parry is working. We're just gonna practice that parry, and then we're gonna put this together with the first blow of the levata to see why this makes sense. Question? I, I, don't, I don't see any great difference. He, he just says, cut parry over the weapon so your, your point just throws ahead. To me, it feels the same. I'm not saying it's the same, but it's definitely a, a similar feeling, yes. Okay, so zone how orts if you want to think of it that way. So find a partner, get masked, do this drill. If you're not sure what you're doing, wave at me. I just want you to throw a rising blow, same drill, the attacking blow is a rising blow from the onside. So my partner is a lefty, so I'm gonna go against the lefty. So don't move. So I'm doing ranging. And now you're parrying. And then you attack, right? Same drill, we just go throw Montantes as the attacker now. Okay? Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, don't ever throw Montante to a low target, you'll get hit in the face. Um, I want to throw here, so I'm protected. Never here, because I'm dead. Okay, so always here. 
Okay? Just do five each, just to see what happens. Five Montante attacks against the parry, then we'll gather in. Go. Okay, a question for you. When you're trying to Montante and you're parried, um, do you feel you can do much from that position? When you, when you throw, when I throw this blow, and someone parries on top of me, do, yeah, I'm kind of covered, but I, I can't really go anywhere, right? Like, if you help me demonstrate, I'm, you can just parry this. So step in here, please. So, and if you go to Prima, your sword high, this will be more effective. So, now push my sword. Push hard. See, like I've lost the leverage, he's above me, he has leverage, he has gravity. I can't win this. I can yield and do something else, but I can't win this. So what does, what does Monty want me to do about this? Monty likes throwing Montantes, but they suck when they're parried, right? So Monty's nuts, right? No, he makes a short, uh, shortcut at the paint so that the parry goes to the air and then get it. There we go. So let's do this drill a few times. Just parry me and actually put a mask on just for, you know, in case it gets unpredictable. So your job is to parry me and then trust me in the face, right? Let's look at this. Yay. Oops, I'm in trouble. Oops, you're in trouble. Let's do that slowly. Matrix style. Parry. Short. Let's change sides. I have to extend enough to look real. Attack. If he hits me on the tip of the sword, I can get through. If you see it, we take the arm because it's extended. I can take his arm without exposing myself to his sword. So once more, this turn. This way. So Pat, we'll do it at full speed. Parry this. So that's an application of the first blow of the Levada. Any questions? So the drill will be, yes, question. You shot with your first cut? Yes. To prevent, to prevent being blocked, but to draw his, his defense. So now his arm is exposed. His defense is good. So if I throw a regular blow, he will parry me and he will be in the advantage. But if I fake him and he parries air, now he's exposed. I draw him out of his fortress. Monty talks about fighting the generals of old. They first built a fortress and then they put sally ports. So your army can issue forth an attack and it can withdraw to defense. So your guard is your fortress, your arcs. We go forward to attack and we return to our guard. So I draw him out of his fortress so he's weak. So um, the drill is, if just help me run through the sequence. Always do a ranging shot. So, so what's your name? Martin. Martin. So don't. Oh, and if you stand in Prima, for this one, put your right hand high. Are you lefty? I'm lefty. No, no, but lefty's fine. Just put your dominant hand high on your dominant side, because otherwise you won't be able to see. <laughs> so I, I can do reverse, though. When I'm doing the attack, I'm just measuring the range. I should just reach with maybe this much of the sword. Then I'm in good measure. Any more, I'm exposing myself too much. Any less, he can, he can avoid it easily. So that's the first. And then the second time, you're gonna parry, a no I throw a normal attack, you, but you parry, okay? So you parry this. And then he counterattacks. And then I faint, and he parries. But every so often, I'll throw a real attack, 
so he can't guarantee on these fainting, so he has to do a real parry. So when you're attacking, mostly faint, then every so often throw the real one, okay? So then it looks like, because okay. he closed in and I closed in, we're here. If he followed Monty's advice, he'd step away and I'd follow. So this time, step away. So it's like, here, I'll reach there. But if he closes in, just step sideways, don't step forwards. But for, to be simple, when you parry, just step back. Okay? Thank you, Martin. Okay, I want you to find a new partner so you're not just playing off the same person all the time. Do the drill. Just wave your sword. Okay, so we've been going about 45 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna say, just a quick Q&A, and we'll take a five minute water break before we continue. But first of all, um, questions, observations, thoughts? Okay, any longer? Yep. Especially with the heavier swords, you yep. need to use the momentum from starting up top here for the first one to right. power the one with the cross. Arm. Right, and that's, I think, why the sword is conducted in a circle. You can't start and stop with these weapons. Yeah. I mean, this is light. This is 2.45 kilos. This is, the, this is, Monty likes a light sword, but even with this, you need to keep momentum. So momentum is key, absolutely. Okay, um, let's say three minute water break, if we can, grab something to drink, back here when you're refreshed. All right, we're, we're trying to simulate Italian fencing. We need to be hot and sweaty, think Mediterranean. Okay, so we've done the first flow of the levata. There, I think I find four, essentially four key lessons in the levata of the sword. So we're going to go to the second blow of the levata. So to help me demonstrate that, would you help me please? Yes. Grab my mask. Um, in the interest of being heard, I'll leave my mask off for a moment. So what we're doing is, I'm going to throw a reverse montante, first to check the range, and then secondly, you're going to parry it. Okay? So when I'm doing a reverse, so, I'm normally just extending my lead foot. I'm not like crossing over. So that's my attack. So if you parry this, cool. So I have a problem, the usual problem. So, so what I want you to do is we're gonna have you parry that again, yeah. but the way Monty would do it, pass back as you parry it. Yes. Okay. So, and now I'm coming again. So you want you to get your sword, what would you want to do now? So you want to kind of recover the sword. So let's look at how we can recover. So if you throw a, you throw a reverso, so an offside rising blow at me, So you're basically going to let the sword kind of turn to your left and cut this way. Okay, so just check the measure. Nice, yeah, just, I'll just extend, yeah, that's good. Okay, and do it again. So if I come back and parry, come around and do it again. Yeah. So sometimes you want to hound your, your defender back. You throw the same blow again. So we're just gonna practice throwing a short blow, get the defense, attack, and I'll try and hit you again, okay? So to keep this simple, try and par parry, the parry the first blow for me. So I go here. So I could do that. It's similar to the first blow, but on the same side. But we're gonna do something a little different. So because we don't have a lot of time to practice parrying, let's make it even simpler. Just step away from my first blow okay. and parry my second blow. Okay. okay? So, first blow, step back, second blow, parry. Cool, let's do that a couple more times. This way. Cool, let's do it again. So I did something different. Let's see that again. 
So pa step back and parry. Try and hit me in the head. What did I do? Sword edge came up, right? So in this blow, we throw a reversal montante, and then we change the reversal montante into a, into a, into a thrust to the face. So Monty has a term called Gita, which just means a guide. But a Gita is between a rising blow and the staccata, a trust. So in my interpretation, a Gita is a transference from a rising blow to a trust. It can come up to hit the arm, but we're placing it in the face. We're turning the quillen, so I'm defended. Monty likes wide quillens because they protect the hand and the arm. So let's look at that once more, now that you know the secret. So my opponent's just gonna back away from the first one. I'm showing him a reversal montante. Then I start what looks like the same thing and I change it. So, reversal montante, Gita. Sorry, okay. overdoing my reach. And second time, big step, passing step. Just watch my feet. Short, long. Okay. And then, very importantly, cover and get back. So last time we cover. Keep yourself alive. Prima. Question. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at that. Uh, I'm going to throw the gator to your face, and I want you to stab me in the face okay. after. All right. That's why the quillen is really important. If he's cutting down to parry, his hands should be lower than the point. My hands are on the point, but I can, I can cover it. So I need to use this to protect myself. I'm using a timing, because even if it's soft parry, he probably cares about his face. So I just want to be behind the sword, so I can defend if I need to, very, very quickly, okay? That's my interpretation. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, the drill will be, first, your partner is not moving. Measure for a committed reversal montante. Then they're going to step back and they're going to parry the second montante. So I'm going to throw first one, and then I'm going to throw a committed one, which he's going to parry and spike me in the face. That's the setup. That prepares him for the joke. Third time, I played the trick. Third time, I turned it over. So I'm coming around his parry, hitting him in the face, and then leaving my sword out, turn to close the line. When I'm out here, I go back to Prima. Good, okay, find another partner. Keep mixing it up. Thank you. It's nice to see people working hard. I like this. <laughs> so, because time is short, I'm going to move to another thing. Yep. Question was, why in this trick he turns the blade before contact? When I turn up the contact, it must be just a mutieren from Langschwert. Yep. Is there a reason to? Yes, because if he contacts you well, he may gain dominance and your material doesn't work. You're trying to get him to you're trying to get him to throw the wrong parry. If you throw a Montante all the way to contact, he's thrown the right parry, 
And if he parries well, your Mutirin will be difficult. If you throw, if you throw, if he throws the wrong parry, and you Gita, he's going to hit your sword with a bad angle, and you're going to you're going to meet with dominance. So we just want to to make them think something else is happening and give them give them a different attack, <coughs> right? It's 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 just more sneaky, right? <laughs> okay. Any other questions? We're going to do the third blow of the Levata, but fear not, it's just like the second blow, but easier. So by doing the third blow, we're also practicing the second blow. I'll demonstrate the third blow. Tell me if this looks familiar. Prima. And I'm going to go montante. Gita. It's the same, but on the dominant side. Most people find this easier to do. Um, the Bolognese would say it's more noble because it's more dangerous. Uh, Monty and Manny Masters prefer to attack on the offside because you're more covered, you're more protected. But we want to attack on both sides. So um, would you help me out slowly? Thank you, Emil. So again, same drill. First, I'm going to check measure, so don't move. Armpit's a great target, by the way. <laughs> then you're going to step back and parry my committed attack. And then you'll spike me in the face, which I don't like. So I'm not going to do that again, obviously. <laughs> and then I'm going to do this, so you can back away. And then, actually, sorry, my poor instructions. Right. <laughs> Here's the previous drill. Just back out the back first out one. And then parry. Parry, yeah. Parry second. Yeah. Two, two on the same. Two on the same, yeah. Okay. So back out. <coughs> parry. Oh, look. It wasn't the Montante. It was a Gita. And then you go stab me in the face, so I'm here. I'm not waiting around. I stab him in the face. I keep my sword out. Close the line. Go back to Prima. Okay. That's the drill. So you're doing the same thing on the other side. We'll do this a bit less, but time to practice the same thing. Thank you. I should tell you to make this clearer. Would you like to help? <coughs> sure, thank you. What's your name? Matthias. Matthias, so I'm facing Matthias. If I go straight at him, so we're doing this drill, backs away, Gita. I've got the Gita on him, but it, this is a little uncomfortable. Yeah, did any of you find this is happening? It's a little too close for comfort. I can fix this with footwork. Actually, stand on this black line so it's easier to see the feet. So to make this more effective, if I start by cutting a little to this side, and then I go over here, getting a better angle, and I'm not on the direct line of his attack. So the footwork is forward and off. So a little bit off the line gives you some safety. So the second blow coming over here. OK? Try it just three or four times like that. Thank you, Matthias. OK, one more blow to go. Okay, we're going to see something new and exotic. We're going to see a downwards blow. Okay, it's uncommon, but, but it's, it's there. So this is also a little about how you redirect force with a big sword. So um, the way we'll do this again is we'll have a situation where a partner backs off from the first blow, parries the second blow, or tries to. Um, want to help out? Great, I'll grab my mask. <clears throat> yes, excellent notion, thank you. <clears throat> so actually, what we'll do, actually, keep it simple, I'll throw a rising blow against you from the offside and just parry the first one. We'll just, uh, first I'll do measure, then you'll parry a rising blow, okay? So measure, 
Hmm, I live a bit near. Now I'll power you this. Cool. Okay, power you this again. A downward blow. It's the last thing you'd expect, right? <laughs> downward blow and then cover. Now, we'll do that once more. So, so, oh, sorry. so pa pa parry this. So the first is short to draw the parry, second is attack. But we're going to now assume my partner is careful and he steps out of the second blow. So step back as I draw the second blow. Okay? And step back and then hit me. Like, come back and go in. Yep. Okay, so. so parry the first and then step out? Well, actually, you know, try and parry the first one. If you don't parry it, if, you, if I come with the second one, just get out of reach yep. and be ready to counterattack. So how do I come back up? I have to not overcommit with the downward blow. Let's do it in slow motion. And actually, let's swap sides. So I'm parry this. Whoops. Attack. I have to I have to spin the the momentum without losing my guard. So if I do this in space, so okay, well, thank you. Just just step out. And if I do that with a heavier sword to demonstrate the idea, thank you. So the play looks like this. Short. Long. Keep your hands in front of you. Back. So I faint, I commit, let it go through, pull back. So there's the faint, the attack, cover, and I retreat. Okay? Let's do that in a drill again. Okay? Thank you. So first of all, I just do a committed rising blow you uh, to measure. Then he parries this. Then I faint it and I come down and he comes to hit me. I don't need to hit him. I just need not to die now. But if I hit him, it's good. Okay? So it's atta faint, attack, get out of trouble. Don't. Okay? A lot of Montante drills do this kind of thing. This is not a Montante drill. It's in front, in front of my shoulder. Okay? Give it a go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Down or in. We're done. Relax. Shake the hands out. Well done. Okay. So. So we have a few, we have a moment for questions, um, but just to reiterate the basics. We want to be light on our feet, we want to get over ourselves, in balance, commit when we need to, when we need to escape, but get back into balance, always in balance, with the sword, arm extended, conducted in a circle, whichever way, flow, keep the flow going, okay? It should be beautiful, it's Italian, okay? It's beautiful, okay? So, Monty likes to fake people out, okay? There's an Italian master, Nicoletto Giganti, who writes, when two masters meet, the exchange not new trusts and cuts, but new wiles and deceits. I think that Monty is on board with this, okay? So, a lot of fakes, a lot of misdirection, a lot of changing uh, with the flow. So, this is the essence of what I distilled from Monty. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can take something to your practice. Um, I have a free online translation, which I will see if I can get Jan to link to the event so you can find my website. And uh, if you're interested, you know, hit me up on social media, say hi, I can point you in direction of information. So, just any questions? <laughs> uh, what's 
I'm going to say not hugely. I think the main thing is the sense of flow and momentum. You can't slow down the big sword. So we have to work with our body. I don't know if the levata is, be, is given as the first blows because they're the most effective techniques or because they train us, because they're difficult and they train us to coordinate with our sword and body. I don't know. I suspect this part of it is training. So I think with long sword you can start and stop. You can change direction easier. I think the big sword you have to flow. To my mind, that's the main difference. But this is the foundation for shorter swords. And from the same period in Milan, we see illustrations of swords that come to this high. So Monty wants his sword here, but he likes long swords. So a lot of Milanese swords of this period, 1490s, come to here. It works with, I, I fight long sword tournaments with this. It's worked pretty well so far. The basics are the same for single sword. There is a, there's a chapter on extra things we do with single sword. It's easier to misdirect, but it's, it's basically, remember all the short weapons, that's what we're doing. Okay. Hey, any other thoughts or questions? Okay, thank you for sticking with this and putting attention and work to it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.